and you're in the Kid Zone. Hi, I'm Kimberly Auburn. We're having a blast in the Kid Zone. Coming up next, it's Juvenile Jury, and here's the big problem for this week. Should grandmothers wear mini skirts? Well, here's what I think. Ew! Next thing you know, they'll be borrowing your Barbie dolls and dancing to the Spice Girls. On second thought, that could be kind of fun. These children are all members of the juvenile jury. Uh, all except the big guy. That's me, Jack Barry. Welcome to Juvenile Jury. Thank you very much. A very cordial welcome once again to Juvenile Jury, the program where the children get a chance to speak their minds, solve some problems, and meet some grown-up guests. We have a fine guest star for you a little later on. Principally, of course, we try to solve some problems, but to do that, here are the youngsters on this week's Juvenile Jury. Here, returning to our program is Max Steyer. Max, how old are you? Five. How old? Five. You have the deepest voice for five. Has everybody told you you have a deep voice? No. What's your middle name, Max? Ian. What is it? Ian. Ian. Max Ian <laughs> Steyer. Isn't that a nice name? We're delighted to have you on the program with us, Max. Here's a newcomer to our panel, Valerie Zisser. How old are you, Valerie? Six. How old? Six. And what's your last name? Zisser. What was that? Zisser. Can you imagine having teeth out and your last name being Zisser? <laughs> Valerie, what do you want to be when you get older? Um, an animal doctor. And what does your daddy do? He works in a liquor store. And what else does he do? Sells tamales. Works in a liquor store and sells tamales? What happened to the liquor business? He sells those along with him. And here's our old friend, Todd Bass. Todd, nice to have you back. How old are you, Todd? I'm six. Six years old. And a May half. I, I beg your pardon? And a half. And a half. May I compliment you once again on your sartorial splendor? What is that? <laughs> on the shirt you're wearing, that's a magnificent shirt. You know who put, picked it out? Your mother. No, me. You? Beautiful, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Isn't that a lovely shirt? Nice to have you with us, Todd. Up on the top row, here's another newcomer to our panel. Here is Helene Wasserman. Helene, how old are you? Eight. And, uh, Helene, uh, what do you want to be when you get older? A singer. A singer. What does your daddy do? He's an accountant for Blue Cross. And I understand your daddy has a little habit that you don't like too well. What is yeah. that? He gives me wet kisses. Wet kisses? <laughs> you like dry kisses better? All right, we'll tell Dad to get those kisses a little drier. And finally, here is Shane Blackwell, who's with us before. How old are you, Shane? Eleven. And I know your dad's a songwriter, Shane. Do you ever sing any of your dad's songs? No. Why? I'm just kind of shy. You are? How come you're here on the juvenile jury? Well, I'm used to that. Oh, really? <laughs> well, we're delighted to have you with us. And those are all the kids on juvenile jury. Okay, kids. Let's get to a problem. As you know, people send problems to us, grown-ups, children, everybody. And this is a problem which is typical of the ones that are coming in. There's a nine-year-old boy has a problem like this. He presented this to us this way. He says, sometimes when I ask my grandmother if I can do something, she says, yes, I can. But when my mother finds out, she says, no, you can't. Now, if I have to mind my mother, why doesn't she have to mind her mother? How about that, kids? Todd Bass, what do you think about this? You see, uh, you could do something. Uh, you know what you could do? No. You could uh, get a real mad by getting a girlfriend or something that she doesn't like, and then you just say, I won't stop it until you let me do what you did when you were a little girl. What problem are you working on, Todd? <laughs> The one about the see the problem is here that the grandmother always thinks she's the boss in the family, and the little girl says, "If I have to listen to my mother, why doesn't my mommy have to listen to her mother?" What about that, Valerie? What do you think? I know. Um, like um, the mother should um, the grandma should let um, the little girl do what she wants, and the mother should let the little girl do what um, the mother wants the little girl to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Max? 
What do you think about this problem? I think I I don't know. What? <laughs> so I don't know. You want some more time to think about it? Or you can think about it. Shane Blackwell up on top. What do you think, Shane? I think that's kind of weird, but when... What's kind of weird? The way you put it, like when you said I that... thought it was kind of weird myself when we took this problem. However, go ahead. Well, when uh, the little, the nine-year-old boy has to mind his mother because he's closer. <laughs> and when the grandmother says that he can do something, he, if he's lucky, he better get it done quick. All right. Helene Wasserman. Well, um, well, your mother, sh um, sh well, the nine-year-old boy's mother, um, um, will always, um, doesn't have to listen to her mother be now because she's older and, and you should, li and the nine-year-old boy should listen to his mo to his mother, not his grandmother. Okay, very good. I think that's very sound advice. Okay, kids, what do you think, what do you think, Use your imagination now. What do you think grandmothers are for? Todd, what do you think grandmothers are for? Uh, they're for love. For love? That's very sweet. The grandmothers are gonna like that. <laughs> Valerie, what do you think grandmothers are for? Um, it's like when the mother has to go out and the, um... And Mostly that's what they're for, yeah. So that the, mother, the grandmother can stay and be babysitter, right? Okay. Max, what do you think a grandmother is for? I don't know. Oh, you do so. Don't you know what the grandmother is for? Not really. Okay. Shane, what do you think? Spoiling you. Spoiling you? Does your grandmother spoil you? Well, when she has time, because we live, I live way far away from her, and I hardly get to see her. I see. And how about you, Helene? Uh, well, to do nice things for you, like. Well, that's what grandmothers are for, to spoil you and to love, and I think all those things are true. And we're going to hear more about what grandmothers are for from a very, very famous grandmother right after this message. This program is brought to you in part by the SOS Scrubber Sponge. Its unique shape really makes a difference. They'll make you smile. They'll make you laugh. You can't help but love these wacky babies. The cutest, funniest, most hilarious home video you have ever seen. Your whole family will fall for these cute, cuddly clowns. Wacky Babies is filmed by world-famous filmmaker Marty Stauber. You've seen Marty's Wild America series on TV. Use your credit card and call this toll-free number now to order Wacky Babies for only $19.99. Order now, and you'll also receive Queen of the Ice absolutely free. This special television offer is not available in stores. Your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. Call now. For rush delivery, get your credit card ready and call 1-800-561-2552 or send your check or money order to the address on your screen. Call 1-800-561-2552 right now. Me want shout. shout wipes. Now wipe out stains wherever you go. Just rub on to help remove stains in a matter of seconds. Shout wipes. Keep them on you to keep stains off you. S.C. E. Johnson Wax. Inside every box of Unisom, you'll find a safe, non-habit forming way to sleep. And you'll also find the only sleep aid made by Pfizer, one of the leading research pharmaceutical companies in the world. Unisom helps you sleep with the same assurance and quality that's in every Pfizer product. And when you're having trouble sleeping, it's nice to know where the sleep comes from. Non-habit forming Unisom. Rest assured. Watch Wheel 2000, Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. This is Game Show Network. And you're in the Kids Zone. Our special guest on Juvenile Jury is a grandmother. 
but you'd never know it to look at her. Would you welcome with me, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the youngest and swingingest grandmother I know, television's own Virginia Graham. Virginia. What a great outfit for a grandmother to be wearing. Oh, it's wonderful to be born in this century, especially when half the desk covers the part that the pants don't. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, Virginia. You look marvelous. What about your grandchildren? How many do you have? I have two. The ballet dancer is seven and the doctor's five. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's just adorable. A little later on, we're going to show pictures of Virginia Graham's grandchildren. Right now, I was wondering, Virginia, the kids, I'm sure, have some very profound thoughts about what grandmothers should do, what they should be like. Now, you saw this wonderful pantsuit that Virginia Graham is wearing. Now, she's a grandmother. Mm -hmm. Kids, what do you think? Should grandmothers wear pantsuits? What do you think about that? Uh, Todd Bass, what do you think? I don't think they should because uh, if, they ha if they have pants on, like, uh, you mean a pants? Yeah, like I'm wearing now, darling. They call it a well, slack suit. Well, I think that's all right. Because yes. girls, they have their privacy. They can have it if they want. It does keep you more private. There's no question. Yes. How did we get into this discussion? He's absolutely right. He must ride a lot of buses. <laughs> <laughs> no, what do you think? Is it all right to wear the pantsuit? Well, if they want it, they can. Uh huh. Yeah. What do you think about mini skirts? Mini skirts. Uh, Helene, up on top. What do you think about grandmothers wearing mini skirts? <laughs> Well, I um, don't really think they should. I think the closest to mini they should get is midi. Good. <laughs> you agree with that, Virginia? I have a friend of mine who has a gorgeous figure, and she really could wear the styles. But as her, as her daughter said about her, you know, you look marvelous, Nana, until you turn around, and then you have a grandma face. <laughs> and see, and this is the thing that kills it, you know? That's if you cute. could only be walking away and didn't have to face someone, I think they're right. Shane, do you think that grandmothers should wear mini skirts? No, because when you're a grandmother, you're usually getting up in age. Not that, not that much, not that much. Down, and, and your, down is yeah. the word, yes. And your legs don't look as good as they used to. And then if you wear a miniskirt, you're not going to say much. I mean, they're well, going to say much. Shana, I think I should stop you right at this point to ask, how old do you think grandmothers are? Well, about 40, maybe older. Oh, that is, that is terrible. You that feel is... better now? Oh, this was like fresh oxygen. Yes, oh my God. Max, how old do you think grandmothers are? Max, take a guess. How old? Huh? Uh, how old? About 50 or 40 or... Yeah, sure. Or what? He's going, wait a while, he's keeping going. 50 or 40 or what? Or... 20? 30. 30 or what else? Or 70. <laughs> <laughs> we just lost the whole battle. Hey, right now, kids, I want you to all look out this way because we, uh, Virginia brought the pictures of her grandchildren, the, the doctor and the ballet dancer. And if you'll take a look over there, would you tell us, can you see that, Virginia, up there? Who, are they the youngsters? Yeah, there they yeah. are. My little tell us about them. They were out here a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And we, uh, the Virginia Grange, which comes from here, kids, uh -huh. they, like, that's, uh, um, can you see it on the monitor? Yeah, they can, can see, see way the over pictures? there. We went to SeaWorld. And I took Jan and Steven to SeaWorld, and we did our show there, and they met the killer whale. And they love being on television. And I said to Steven, who is a genius, and of course you know the defini definition of a genius, no. don't you? The average grandchild of average grandparents. <laughs> so I said to him, uh, would you like to be a TV star? And he says, not me, baby. Do you think that's proper to call your grandma baby? No. I love it. Virginia, I'm sure, I'm sure that you must have some marvelous grandmother stories. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Uh, well, of course, the, the, the cutest story I ever heard was Jan. Uh, you know how your parents are. Do they take pictures of you all the time? Oh, it's yeah, so boring, all isn't it? Head. Yes. Do you mind it with the flashing bulbs all the time and smile? So we do the same thing. And Jan was raised, I think, on Pablum and uh, Kodak. So she had her pictures taken since she was a child. And one day she saw her first storm, the first time she ever saw lightning in her life. And she was looking out the window and she called her daddy and she says, Daddy, come in. God just took my picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's a charming story. Now, you know what that reminds me of? This is not a... 
This is not a grandmother story, but what you said just reminded me, and this is true. Arlene Francis, this you know, from true. What's My Line? No, that story is really, Mine this is, is true. Yeah, yours is true, too. Yeah. Arlene Francis was, used to go to church every Sunday, and she may have told you this story. She had a little boy, Peter, he was only five at the time, and as they came out of church, the priest blessed his head and said, tapped his head and said, God bless you. The kid said, I don't have a cold. Oh, <laughs> no, it is so marvelous to see the world through the eyes of children. I envy oh. you this show yeah. more than anything in the world because the only truth that we have today really is the, the time a child sees something for the first time. I'd love to know who does Todd's hair. I've been trying to get that color. My I think Marty <laughs> Allen. Marty oh, Allen does it, I think. Uh, is that natural? Is your hair natural, Todd? Oh, it's gorgeous. Virginia, I think you will be interested in something that we have done. We take our cameras and microphones out to various schools and we ask kids questions. Sometimes we ask kids, same kid, a lot of questions, but we ask the children, this particular film segment, what is a grandmother? What does a grandmother do? Now, some of these children you may have seen before, others will be absolutely fresh faces to you. Let's see on film what they said about grandmothers. What do they do and what are grandmothers? And this side thing just sit in rocking chairs and just watch TV because they're very old and they don't do many things. They're not that strong. Well, she's a person like if your mother doesn't want you to, if, you're, if she stand with you and you go ask your mother to give you some money, she won't. You go ask your grandmother and she will. She, uh, she, so, she sews and she, um, sometimes she takes a walk. My grandmother is a person older than your mother. And she sits in a chair and spoils you. I want you to think about this. What's a grandmother, in your opinion? Well, a grandmother is, if I grow up and, I have, and I'm married and my wife has a baby, she, and my mother will be my grandmother. Well, <laughs> she takes care of her children. A grandmother is someone who used to take care of your parents, and she now takes care of you, and she feeds you, and you help, and she's real nice to you. She's, she brings lots to our children's children, and she likes to give them candy and stuff like that. And let them take out the trash and play ball. <laughs> grandmothers do, and that's what grandmothers are. And we hope that in your city, you will always get a chance to watch this grandmother whenever her show appears. It's so very, very entertaining. Would you join me in saying goodbye to the sprightly, as young as grandmother we know, Virginia Graham. Thank, Thank you, Virginia. You. We'll be back in just a moment with our in-person guests right after this message. Is it 5 sixteenths or 9 30 seconds? Does it take a standard socket or metric? What you need is Gator Grip. It's a single socket that fits any size nut or bolt. Gator Grip replaces this entire set of standard sockets and all these metric sockets as well. No matter what size the bolt, small, medium, or large, Gator Grip will fit it. This is what I used to haul around with me, but no more. Now this is all I need. Whatever the job, Gator Grip and Tackle it. Gator Grip is quality made in the USA. It grabs onto any size bolt with the strength of a gator. The secret is these 54 spring-loaded pins. They retract to form tightly around whatever size bolt you have. Watch, this man is using a regular socket set. He has to change sockets with every bolt. But this man is using Gator Grip. No searching, no changing, he's done. Watch in slow motion with part of the casing removed so you can see the steel pins in action. Gator Grip is so versatile it can tackle these wing nuts, eye bolts too. It can also take care of those square nuts. And look, it can even remove broken nuts, stripped nuts, and rusted nuts quickly and easily. Watch it! A slipped wrench can really bruise your knuckles. But Gator Grip always holds securely. It delivers over a hundred foot-pounds of torque. Charlie's got a whole garage full of tools, but I've got Gator Grip. It does the job every time. Why spend hundreds of dollars on all these tools? All you need is Gator Grip. It's always the right tool, and it's yours now through this special TV offer. It comes with a lifetime replacement warranty, plus a money-back guarantee if you're not delighted. But wait! Order now, and you'll also get this power adapter that turns any drill or power screwdriver into a power Gator Grip. It gets the job done in no time.
time. Imagine all the convenience of Gator Grip and Power 2. This is one offer you won't want to miss, so get a grip. Get Gator Grip now. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, in addition to solving problems for those of you at home who are nice enough to write problems to us, we also invite youngsters to come right here to the studio and have a face-to-face -face confrontation with the members of the juvenile jury. And so we ask you to welcome with us a young lady with a problem. She is eight years old, and her name is Wendy Frauschiger. Wendy, would you come out? Hi, Wendy. How are you? Hi. You're eight years old? Is that right? I'm seven. Seven years old. Here I am making you older already. <laughs> what, is, what do you want to be when you get older, Wendy? An animal doctor. An animal doctor? What does your daddy do? He's a marriage counselor. Well, you came to the right place. A marriage counselor. Maybe we should have him on the juvenile jury. What is your problem, Wendy? I have an uncle who always hits me and calls me names. Your uncle hits you and calls you names? That's her problem. What an uncle. Uh, any questions? Uh, Sh Shane, yes. No, let, let's... Uh, Todd, you, you see you had your hands up first. Yes, what's your question, Todd? Uh, 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 how does he hit you? Where does he hit you? Where does he hit you? In my arm. Your uncle hits you on the arm. Um, Valerie, yes. Uh, he he um, should ignore him um, and um, tell his mom or, or tell her mom. Why, why do you think your uncle hits you? That doesn't sound very nice for an uncle to do. Why do you think he hits you? Mm. Do you do things that he doesn't like? Hmm? I don't know. You don't know why? You, have you asked him why he hits you? No. Well, maybe we should ask him. Here we have the uncle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, if you will, her uncle. All right, if you will, David, come out. Here is the uncle. The uncle's name is uh, David. Is that your name? David Florence. Yeah. David, you are this young lady's uncle? Yeah. How old are you, David? Nine. Nine years old. And why do you hit her? Because she always does everything wrong. Stand over this way so she can get in the picture, too. There you are. Is that right? Do you do things wrong, Wendy? Hmm? No. No. What kind of things does she do wrong? She breaks stuff. She gets all into trouble. Is that right, Wendy? No. Quids, do you, wanna, you have any questions you'd like to ask of either of them? Now, they're both here. This is the uncle. This is the niece. Shane, yes. How old your uncle's nine? Uh, do you guys live together in the same house? No. Close. I'm glad you qualified that whole thing. Uh, uh, Helene, yes. How often does he hit you? Wendy? Every time I come over to his house. Yes, Todd? Why, does it, why don't you uh, tell your uh, mother? She doesn't do anything. Well, then, then you should just uh, call him names and, call, and hit him back. What kind of things does she break? She breaks like... Um, other toys I have and bottles and stuff like that. Okay, any other questions? Yes, Valerie. Um, she should call him names every time, um, I, his uncle, every time her uncle calls him her names, he, she should call him back names and hit him. Well, let's take a quick rundown here, starting up there with you, Shane. Here's a problem between an uncle and a niece. And they can't seem to get along, and he hits her, and she breaks things. Tell them how they can resolve this as best you can figure it out. Well, the best I can figure it out is you better stay away from him, and he better get better toys. <laughs> All right. Helene? Well, um, well, you, well, you, sh well, um, well, you should, I'm talking to, to the, um, uncle, I mean. It's okay. You can talk to the uncle you okay, mean. He well, is very mean, she thinks. <laughs> well, you should um, just stop doing things to, to her, and, <coughs> and you should, should stop do, breaking things. All right. Todd? Why does she go to his house if he bothers her? Yeah, why do you, why do you go to his house if he's going to hit you? Wendy? Because I like to sleep over there. It's comfortable. Ah, I see. Valerie? Um, she should, um, tell him, no, what I think I can have forgot. All right. Max, do you have a solution for this? Have any no. answer? None at all. Are you getting along better now? Yes. Why? Because now she got me on this show. <laughs> 
Well, might I suggest that since she likes to sleep over to your house, and since you're a boy, that you stop hitting her, and I'll get, try to get her to promise us that she won't break any of your things. Is that the deal? A deal with you, Uncle? A deal with you, niece? Yes. We hope that solves your problem. Thank you very much, kids, and we'll be back right in just a moment, right after these words. Is that big clip causing stale chips? Is freezer burn making your stomach turn? Then you need Eurosealer, the amazing new sealer that creates an airtight seal that locks in freshness so food lasts longer. Simply slide Eurosealer along the edge of any bag and it's sealed airtight. It's that easy. Every time you open it, food tastes like it just came fresh from the store. Once, twice, every time. The secret is Eurosealer's microthermal technology that creates a seal so airtight even water won't leak. Amazing! Don't waste money on spoiled food. Don't waste money on spilled food. Use what you need and seal up the rest. Eurosealer keeps cereal crunchy, chips crispy, vegetables fresh, and deli meat as delicious as the day it was sliced. Look, one week later, salad stored with a twist-type bag is brown and slimy. But salad sealed with Eurosealer is green and fresh. With Eurosealer, you'll save a bundle buying bulk at warehouse clubs. And look, its magnetic surface attaches easily to the refrigerator. Use it outdoors. It seals the heaviest bag airtight. Keep bottles from leaking when you travel and more. This huge sealer costs $229, and you have to buy the bags. But now, on this exclusive TV offer, you can get the amazing Euro sealer for only $19.95. Call within the next 10 minutes and get Eurocan at no additional charge. Eurocan leaves edges incredibly smooth. You can even reapply the lid. Imagine, you get Euro sealer and Eurocan, a $40 value, all for only $19.95. Not available in stores, so don't delay. Seal the deal and order Euro sealer to day. To order the Euro Sealer and receive the Eurocan absolutely free, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-549-5995 or send check or money order to the address on your screen. Ask your operator how you can get the AC adapter jack so that you will never have to use batteries again. Order yours. Call now. Likewise. I am out in the studio audience to talk to some of the people who are visiting with us. First of all, there's a Mr. Ginsburg. Where is Mr. Ginsburg? Mr. Ginsburg, how are you, sir? Very good, thank you. I understand you. you have a problem you'd like the kids of the juvenile jury to solve. What is the problem or okay. question? The question is, should children spend more time doing their uh, school homework and spend less time watching television? How about that, kids? More time on homework or more t or less time on television? What do you think, Todd Bass? Uh, maybe uh, d you should tell your children that only at like, uh, you should limit down to TV to nighttime, only to 8 o'clock, and maybe, and only if the, it's, a, it's a learning show, then they can see it at daytime, early at, like, in the morning. Thank you, Dr. Spock. <laughs> Helene. Well, I think they should watch television after they're all through with their homework. Okay. Valerie Zisser. Well, it depends if they have homework, but if they have homework, they should do it before they watch TV. Uh-huh. Max? They should um, first do their homework. And then is it hard to watch TV? Yeah. For how long? For how long? To their bedtime. Okay. I wish, uh, thank you. We hope you answered that problem. And now, kids, we're all going to have to say goodbye. It's not even time for the kids to say goodbye. We hope you were watching and enjoyed watching. And we'll see you next time. Until then, thanks for being with us. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.